Well, thank you everybody. Thank you for joining us today for this special webinar, Live Critique, How to Turbocharge Your Donation Today. In today's webinar, we're hoping you will walk away with some tangible takeaways on how you can improve your donation page and make it easy for your donors to complete their donations. My name is Aretha Simons. I'm the webinar producer here at TechSoup. And I have um, Kevin Wong here. He's a webinar intern. Thank you for being here today with us. Um, before I get started, I want to, for those of you who've never been to one of our webinars, let me show you just how you can engage today. Um, feel free to type your questions in the chat, but we would love if you would type them in the Q&A. And if you see a question that you want answered, just like, hey, I want that, I want to know the answer to the question you want, you go ahead and give it a thumbs up. That kind of bump it up to the top because you never know, we might have thousands of questions here. I don't know. We will email you the video replay of this webinar within 48 hours. Um, so look for that in your email. If you need the closed caption, go ahead and type in the CC and we'll turn on the live transcription for you. So I'm going to move out of the way and turn it over to one of our partners from Cosbach. Rob, welcome. And Jenny, well, Jenna, welcome. Thank you for being here today. Thanks for having us, Aretha. Um, we're super excited to deliver this webinar uh, to audiences. And Jenna and I just have a ton of stuff to share with the audience. So um, today in our, in our TechSoup webinar, we're going to be doing a live critique of how to turbocharge your donation page. Um, we're going to do a few things. And I'm going to have a few slides. Yeah, it's a little scary to have slides, but we'll just go over it real fast. Uh, my name is Rob Wu. I'm the founder and CEO of Cosbox. Uh, we started off as just a passion project 12 years ago, uh, where my co-founder and I got an apartment in Harlem and started building uh, fundraising websites for nonprofits, became Cosbox, a digital fundraising platform for nonprofits. So I helped raise organizations. But my personally, I've raised over $200,000 uh, through online donation forums, as well as peer-to-peer -peer fundraising for nonprofits I volunteer with. And Jenna over here from our team has helped tons of organizations raise far more than that through the work that she does over here at Cosbox. So we're super excited to share with you a little bit about Cosbox, a little bit about donation page best practices, as well as a little bit about um, some tangible examples of how you can improve your donation page. I'm gonna hand it over to Jenna. Awesome. Thanks so much, Rob, and I'm really happy to be here. So if you're new to Causebox, Causebox, again, is a digital fundraising platform, and we help you raise more with less effort. And we'll do that by giving you best-in-class online fundraising through donation forms, uh, campaign sites with peer-to-peer, -peer, et cetera, which we will dive into, um, hands-on support, so you get to talk to real people anytime you need us, um, and then, of course, top-rated fundraising education, which is uh, part of these webinars, we're providing best practices for you and your team um, so that you can run your fundraising more effectively. Uh, so again, whereas typical fundraising software might be clunky and complex, uh, you might have an old donation form, we're here to give you a nice new presentation, a new way of doing fundraising digitally for your organization, whether it's on your website, accepting your website donations, um, or to you know do it over crowdfunding and peer to peer with event ticketing and such. Um, we give you a really easy way to track and tidy up all of your digital fundraising under one roof. Um, so like we said, uh, like I've mentioned, you can modernize your donations with online uh, an online tool like Causebox to really just modernize your website donation form. So you're going to want to replace anything clunky or something that might um, prohibit a donor from processing a donation. Um, and so we remove all the barriers by giving you mobile wallets, which are Apple Pay, um, you know, different donation type options, one time recurring in pledge. Uh, getting those automated receipts sent out that are customizable and then um, completely making it 100% customizable and brandable to your org to make it just the best user experience. Um, and on top of that, you can also run ticketing, event ticketing, um, raffle ticketing. You can really customize the ticket form um, to suit your organization's needs in the same way that you can the donation form. So you get to unfrankenstein your fundraising. You don't need one platform here doing one function and another platform and try to uh, paste them together. Um, it makes it hard for all of your um, you know, reconciling after you can just run all of your uh, all of your fundraising under one roof, um, and we help you do that pretty easily. 
Uh, and then of course, hands-free peer-to-peer. This is also another great component of digital fundraising that we see helps organizations double their funding goal um, pretty organically by just automatically multiplying the number of your networks by however many people you can activate to fundraise on your behalf. And we give them a really easy to use dashboard, a 60 second sign up. It's so simple for people just to um, learn about your mission and get engaged and active um, all online while they're doing you know, everything else that they're doing, but they can make time for fundraising. We give them a really easy tool to do that. Um, and so we do have a promotion going on um, for nonprofits looking to get up and running on a budget. Um, you can check out TechSoup, um, techsoup.org slash causebox. Uh, you can go through a quick validation process and we are offering our light annual plan at 40% uh, off. Um, with this one with this promotion so definitely encourage you to check out that link if you are an org that's with an annual budget of under half a million 500,000 um, you can again go through the validation um, get yourself uh, you know approved for the 40% off discount and then you're automatically uh, into uh, an upgrade for the annual standard plan uh, so you get an automatic upgrade a uh, really, really great price for this plan. Um, you're able to run all your fundraising with unlimited forms and uh, campaigns uh, and also have access to full data, data exports. So this is a really great price, a really great offer, a really great way to get up and running quickly. Um, you can just check out uh, also our uh, schedule a demo page if you want to learn more about how Causebox can specifically help your organization get up and running. And also, um, we do have, as I had mentioned, educational section on our website. Um, you can check out our blog. Um, so just to go to our blog page, and then you can subscribe to free fundraising resources. So you can always be in the know about you know, what the best, best practices are um, going on and how you can um, you know, nurture and cultivate new donors every, uh, every month, all year long. So yes. I'm going to hand it back to Rob. Thank you, Jenna. Um, I, that was a little bit about Cosbox, and I think a lot of folks want to learn about today why they're joining is on how to improve their donation page. So today what we're going to do is we're, we're actually going to identify one of the problems, which is people are not making donations on your donation page. And so that's why you're on our webinar today. You're trying to figure out how can I increase digital giving? How can I get more donors through the door? And how can I reduce the amount of headache that I have? So today we're actually going to solve that problem and by first identifying what that problem is and then actually identifying what the impact of the problem is. So if you don't have a lot of donations going in through the door, if you don't have a great donation page, then you get lukewarm funders and results. You try very hard to figure out how to craft the best message and storytelling and the right channels. But then at the end of the day, you don't get a lot of donations and you're just scratching your head trying to figure out why. Or you have this problem of donors don't return. They may donate once, but then 50% of them don't come again. So you're trying to figure out how to solve that. And then very lastly, the impact of, of people not donating on your donation page is that you have more and more fires to fight every single day. So what I want to do today is really take you on a journey. I've been really involved in camper vanning for the past four months because it's a new hobby of mine. Um, so I want to take you in a similar journey of just how of uncovering what this problem is, shifting your thinking, and actually delivering some best practices on how you can improve your donation page. And then from there, uh, going through a few examples of what other organizations are doing and some great practices for their donation page. So uh, how is gonna be laid out in terms of our roadmap? We have 15 minutes of best practices. This is basically 15 minutes of me just talking about some great things of what I learned about donation pages from 1500 customers that we serve over here at Cosbox. Um, we'll do 30 minutes of actually live critiques. So as you register for this uh, live critique webinar, uh, I think there was a question that asked if you wanted to submit a donation page to be critiqued. Now, we received over a thousand uh, registrations, so we can't go over each one today, but we'll try to tackle as many as possible within 30 to 35 minutes as what time allows. And then we'll have a big chunk of time for just some Q&A. Uh, so we can dive a little deeper into specifics um, of kind of questions that people have. 
Um, one of the things that we're offering today is uh, just going to be two winners. Obviously, everybody today is a winner, but today, in terms of this uh, life critique, there's going to be two winners. So we're going to have an attendee's choice. So for everyone who is on this webinar today, uh, we're going to be going, going over maybe 10, hopefully 12 like donation pages, and it's going to be up to you to decide who gets a $100 donation that I'm going to donate to. So we're gonna have a live poll at the end of our webinar for that. And the second one is speaker's choice. Uh, this is actually more of Jenna's choice. So uh, Jenna's gonna go through all these examples uh, along with me, and then she's gonna have a speaker's choice award as well. So um, I think it's gonna be a lot of fun to see uh, who gets the $100 donations. All right, so uh, one of the things before we get into best practices though, is I want to challenge you to shift your thinking. Uh, shifting our thinking is very difficult because it gives you a different perspective. Uh, I think one of the big problems that a lot of organizations come across as a big blocker is that they have this anti-donor current state of their donation form, where what's important for them in making a decision for how they implement their donation form or donation page is based on two things. It's one, something that's easy for my organization, and secondly, so there's kind of like this middle area in this Venn diagram where they think that is the sweet spot of fundraising, which a lot of times is your organization is a very important stakeholder for your organization. But I challenge you to think a little bit more about your donors. So shift your mindset from this anti-donor uh, perspective to a donor-centric sweet spot where your donors care about really on your donation page is something that's easy for them to go through the process and something that's compelling. So something that shows impact that has a story. So finding this sweet spot will allow you to unlock huge potential and conversion when it comes to your donation page. So we wanna ask ourselves today, is it worth the work to increase fundraising results by improving my donation page? It's gonna be more work. I know you're fighting a lot of fires, but you have to ask yourself, is it worth it? And I challenge you to think through some of these best practices, think through some of these critiques uh, to figure out if this is something you wanna do. All right, let's talk about some best practices real fast. So I have five, maybe six, I actually do forget. I have a couple of best practices I want to share with you of what I learned from looking at just thousands of donation pages over the, well, tens of thousands at this point over the course of over a decade. So one best practice for your donation page is be visible. All right, so 30% of so we did a study. Basically, you'll see an increase in donation conversion rates on your donation page. Um, by about 30% when you change the button color, something super simple. I know a lot of times we think, hey, the best button color is yellow because that's the default that was given to me by my donation processor. Well, a lot of times that may not be the best color. Um, and when we look at, at this study is when there's a change from a gray, so something that's more muted, something that's more common that blends into the background, so it's something more red, which kind of stands out and pops out, then you see an increase in donation conversion rates. The benefit for your donor is they find it really easy to navigate to and find your donate button when they want to make a donation. The benefit to your organization is that you get increased donations just by changing something that's very small. The second best practice is be branded. So donors are 70% more likely to give again if they gave on a branded donation page the first time. So again, you'll get more donors, returning donors, if you have something that's well-designed built into your website that has your organization on it. Um, one of our organizations that, um, that is part of our audience, Kirsten Elliott, Director of Development at Hawkwatch, she says, you know, make sure you include a value proposition on your donation page and don't assume the person who landed on there is convinced to give yet. Mm -hmm. uh, what we wanna do is make sure that we have the proper branding, the proper story, the proper impact displayed on your donation page so it's less transactional and more story-based. Taylor Dashi from um, Carousel Ranch, who raises over $100,000 to cause lives every single year, she says her number one tip is to have consistent branding because there's a lot of multiple touch points as you're doing fundraising throughout the year. Um, so on your donation page, you have to have that brand and that story. The benefit to your organization is that it increases the level of trust, increases memor mem memorability, so that as they hear about you more, just like advertising, they have more likely to make a donation. To your organization, obviously it increases conversion and retention rates. All right. Best practice number three is to use descriptive tiers. So descriptive tiers are a way for you to say, hey, here's some recommended tiers of uh, uh, 
those donation amounts, and here's a description of it. So instead of just saying, here, here's 25, 50, 100, $200 as amounts, you're actually tying those amounts to something that's descriptive, like it serves one day of housing for a homeless person. So 68% of donors agree that knowing how their donation makes an impact is really important to your gift. So if you take this learning and actually apply it to your donation page and donation form, this is what it will look like. You have donation amounts on the left, you'll have uh, the descriptive tiers on the right. So when donors are looking at your form and trying to make a donation, they actually are not thinking about what is their budget. They're thinking about what is the impact I wanna have, which is more compelling and more powerful of a story and, what, and of a narrative for a donor. Uh, Alice Lasad, CEO of Meet Fight, one of our other uh, Coswax customers that raises about $100,000 a year. Uh, her number one tip is to show donors what their money is going to tell people. Uh, when you tie donor impact to donor dollar, then something magical happens where you can increase giving very easily. Uh, Kimar Walford, uh, part of a consultancy, he says his number one tip is being clear about how the money will be used to change lives. So again, as you tie donor impact to donor dollar, then something magical really happens. The donors, the benefits for them is that they're able to choose a giving amount easily so they can feel like they're making an impact. And a lot of times when it comes to small gifts like this, it's really about tying that story together for a donor so they understand if I give you a certain amount of money, then something else will happen. So there's just if then statement that happens. For an organization, you get increased gift size. All right. And Best practice number four is offering recurring donations. Recurring donations are an easy way for donors to make a donation on autopilot without having to think about it. So recurring donors give 42% more annually than one-time donors. And we also see that recurring donors have a 90% return, retention rate as opposed to 46% for one-time donors. So automatically, if you're able to acquire a recurring donor, if they make that uh, decision upfront, then you have a higher chance of retaining them as well as increasing the lifetime value of that donor. Uh, one of the ways that we offer this at Cosvox, in addition to just monthly recurring donation is what we call pledge donations. This is similar to kind of a buy now, pay later scheme, um, but it's, we call it pledge now, pay later, where donors can go in, make a pledge, say, hey, I wanna make a pledge of $10,000 or $1,000, and we automatically break up that donation into smaller amounts that are billed monthly or billed yearly so the donor can fit in uh, something smaller on a, on a regular basis that adds up into something bigger. So at the end of the day, this actually increases gift size as well as gift frequency. Uh, when we did a study on this, 63% of donors would give higher amounts through these pledge donations. So that's an additional way for you to increase giving on your donation page without having to change your giving strategy. Benefits to your organization uh, in include increased gift size. Benefits to your donors include um, the ability just to commit larger uh, donation amounts that fits their budget. And then number five, enable mobile wallets. Uh, we see a huge growth in mobile wallets. 54% of consumers have used a mobile wallet to make a payment. And 50%, uh, there's an estimated growth of about 50% uh, use of mobile wallets from 2020 to 2025. Uh, so what a mobile wallet is, is something like Apple Pay or Google Pay, PayPal as well. Um, this basically allows people to make a donation without having to pull out their credit card and punch in the numbers uh, to make a transaction. So it makes it more easy for, makes it easier for donors to go through the process. Uh, Sasha Bosha from the Bladder Cancer Canada uh, mentions to us that and she recommends making uh, your donation page mobile friendly with mobile capabilities as a way to increase donations that you get. Uh, for donors, uh, you can give quickly on, they can give quickly on any device uh, without having to go through multiple steps. And then for your organization, you can increase your conversion rate so you get more donations. So in summary, uh, the best practices when it comes to your donation pages are one, be visible, two, be branded, three, use this descriptive tiers, four, offer recurring and pledge donations, and very lastly, enable mobile wallets. So uh, these best practices really set the stage for today's live critique. Um, even if you don't save for your critique, which I hope you do, uh, you'll have some best practices to look at your donation page. But what we want to do next is actually take some of these best practices and see how it's reflected on actual donation pages um, that are on our platform, as well as actual donation pages um, that you've submitted as a registrant. So Jen, I want to hand it over to you. 
Awesome, thanks. I'm gonna share my screen. All right, let's dive in. So we have here our first organization the Harmony Cafe. Um, and right off the bat, we see a big donate button. So great, visible. I click it and it looks like this, is, you know, we're on the donation page. Um, and so I see this other secondary option to donate because the donate button doesn't drop me down to anything. Um, we have a couple other additional options down here. Um, make a donation which doesn't seem to be working. So it seems like we have a couple um, not working links. So those would probably prefer, preferably to be updated um, if there was you know, another donation option there. Um, but we do have the secure PayPal option. Um, so it looks like this donation form is navigating off screen to, um, to PayPal. Um, so you know, ideally we would say, you know, best practice would be to leave it embedded right on the page. Right. Um, so, so some some pros is that you know everything is pretty very clear, visible, nice colors. Um, some some things to improve might be to use one embedded donation form. Um, you can consolidate all these different giving options uh, to uh, put it put it on one form, um, and then maybe remove you know include PayPal on that form as well, so you don't have to redirect to another page. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a great observation. I really love how um, they have the donate button on top. So it's easy for donors when they land on the website anywhere that they can make a donation. Um, also, you see the volunteer button as well, because um, what this organization is trying to do is to drive volunteers as well as to drive donations. So I love kind of how it's, it's in the navigation. It's really easy to find. I think one of the things when I was browsing this site, Jen, if you can scroll down a little bit, can you click on the click here, the black button on um, any one of them? Yeah, so when I was clicking around, uh, I think what was surprising to me is that uh, these four buttons that you see actually don't work. So mm -hmm. one of the improvement areas here is to uh, basically uh, reduce or just eliminate those four boxes. Uh, because what happens is that as your donors are going to your donate page, if they see something that, that they want to click on, if it doesn't work, then it causes some confusion. So uh, what I really love is just kind of navigation. Uh, something you need to really improve on is just to either troubleshoot these four boxes or to figure out um, how they tie back to your donation page in order to have it work for your donors. But uh, I really love what they have here. I also really love how there's a lot of information left here. For example, there's, um, uh, you, you see the badge of approval. Uh, so there's some social proof, proof on the top. Um, and then there's some information about um, how they're hundred percent volunteer based. I think having that story is really compelling. Um, so uh, you really kind of crafting this story where, you know, if they're all volunteer based and implies that, uh, as you donate to the organization, 100% of it actually goes to the mission. So I think there's a story here that is worth pulling more out of and telling about, okay, why are you 100% volunteer based? What does it actually mean? So it actually compels donors that you, you'll be a good steward um, to the donor dollar. So I really love this one. Yeah, very, very great. Um, and we are going to move along um, over to Res Refuge. Um, so the you know, when you go right on the page, um, this is actually an example of cause box donation form. Um, they have, you know, their mission right here on the landing page. Um, and then you see, see the donate button with a nice little heart. Um, and so you just click it, it pops up. We have, uh, you know, they continued and branded their slogan here um, on a little subtitle. Uh, they have a one-time and also recurring gift option. Um, so really easy and quick way to process a donation here. Um, and then on the second page, uh, quick, quick way to just input donor information, first name, last name, email, some postal, and then they are using a mobile wallet on Cosbox, um, so the donor can use their saved uh, payment method for a faster transaction. Um, I really like this form because, as I had mentioned, it's very quick um, for the donor. They don't have to, you know, go through a lot of different steps. Um, and it's completely branded to the organization's website. And um, as soon as, you know, as soon as they're done processing the payment, um, the donor is still able to stay right on the organization's website and kind of browse around, um, discovering more about their vision and mission, learning more about them, um, or they can be doing this first part uh, initially before making the donation. Maybe they're just on the site browsing, uh, the donate button option is following them wherever they go on the screen. 
um, and they don't even know really that they're uh, going through a, a don donation processor at all. So um, really just user friendly and a really nice streamlined process, I think. I don't know, Rob, if you had any um, anything else you wanted to add. Um, I think this ties back to one of our first best practices is uh, to be visible, which is, you know, is very visible. <laughs> and then the second, the second best practice is to be branded, uh, meaning that uh, this, this form is just on the site. The, the donor isn't taken to a third party site, they're not redirected, so there's less errors involved, and it's actually a faster loading speed as well. Um, so I think this is very good in terms of how they're doing that. Um, I think one of the things that I was thinking about um, maybe that they can improve on is uh, what I talked about in terms of the best practice about tying the donor dollar uh, to a specific uh, type of impact. Um, where they have 15, 35, 75, I think those are great as selectors. Um, but then uh, actually tying to that to the work that they do could be interesting as a way to look at it. Uh, the second thing that I was looking at as well is um, the average donation on Cosbox is closer to around $100. So if I take that same metric and then I apply it to just on average, like uh, for Res Refuge, they may be recommending donation amounts um, that are leaving donor dollars on the table. So uh, one of the things to think about is taking a look at your donor data, figuring out what is the average gift size and crafting these donation amounts around that average gift size. Um, so I would bet if I was a betting man, which I'm not, <laughs> I, I would bet that uh, Res Refuge could increase gift size just by having a one or two additional uh, recommended donation amounts well above $100. Um, yes, uh, I definitely agree with that. Um, and uh, yeah, I think this is a, just another great example. Um, so Latino Communications is our third example. Um, and so we have a click to donate option and it brings in, uh, looks like I have to enter uh, a mobile phone for login. Um, so right off the bat, I'm a little dissuaded because I don't, I'm a little confused about like how to process the donation and I guess I have to log in. Um, but we can go back and see what else there is an option here. Let's see. Okay, so if I scroll down a little bit, there's a, another donate option and it brings me to a PayPal, donate with PayPal. So I would say maybe just right off the bat, um, visibility uh, is a little unclear for me. Um, and so, uh, you know, I might recommend uh, moving that up to the top navigation bar, um, this, this donate option that, that goes to PayPal. Um, but I do love the landing page here. Um, you know how how they've you know talked about their passion for communication and service. Um, you know, giving options to learn more about their organization. Um, but again, we have like on this page, we had an initial pop up plus the donation button here. Plus we have a third um, make a donation option uh, below that. And as we had mentioned previously, oh, it looks like this page isn't working right now. Um, so as we mentioned previously with the first example, just to kind of eliminate multiple boxes, multiple link options on a donation landing page um, so that it's a more funneled, you know, the donor knows exactly which button to click on. Um, and then there's, you know, probably only one page to eliminate any sort of confusion. Um, and, and by that, you might, um, you know, keep more donations on the table, so to speak, if and to not dissuade people off of the page if they got, you know, confused or, uh, you know, just frustrated from the donation, the donation experience. Mm -hmm. um, another reason why we love having a donation form with tiers is that, you know, say I say I got to the PayPal option and I'm ready to make a donation, but I don't really know what to give or, um, you know, how much to give, where it's going. To, um, so by putting tiered uh, donation tiers with, with values, concrete values, um, just helps the donor make a more informed donation. Um, so you're kind of just, you're, you're directing the donor where to make the donation and how to make a donation um, in, in an educated way. Yeah, um, I think those are some great observations. I think uh, two that I saw in addition to this is, um, I, I really love kind of this design of the page. They also make it simple too for folks to make a donation. Uh, I like how they're using two primary colors. You have the red and the blue. 
um, as uh, some of the part of the branding, and they carry this over to the navigation as well as the buttons. But one of the things I did see is that typically as a best practice, when you have a donate button, you want to make sure that donate button has the same color and it's consistent across all of your website. Um, so uh, if when you look at this one on the top, it's blue uh, as the primary, then it changes to a white. When you scroll down, um, the donate buttons are red and it changed to a blue. Um, so what happens is that there's some moments of uh, donor confusion because what a donor is thinking about a donate button and they're thinking, hey, the donate button should be blue because it's the first time I saw it. But then the button changes to red uh, closer to the end of the page. And if we kind of browse around on the site, maybe we see some other differences too. So one of the things to make it more consistent um, so that you're introducing uh, the concept in the same way every time your donate page, donate button, is that uh, you use the same color. Uh, I would recommend for, the, for this is, I like how the red pops out a little bit more. So using a red to a blue uh, contrast, like how it's shown over here, will make it more consistent with the design of um, how your, your donation button is designed. So that's something to consider. I think the second thing is that uh, they're using um, a redirect to go to a different screen once you click on a donate button. I did notice that the logo on that um, donation form is a broken image. So this is something that's pretty easy to fix uh, where, um, yeah, you just have to upload a new image into your, your PayPal processor and then I'll load the logo or whatever image they specify. Uh, so that's something to consider too, um, because we want to reduce the amount of confusion donors have and donors may get confused when they look at a broken image link or it maybe it just doesn't look as polished as it should be. So that's something to take a look at. But I think overall, I love the site. Um, I love kind of the communication around it. I think they're having a lot of different call to actions, which is um, uh, beneficial uh, to a certain respect. So um, a lot of great things over here as well. Cool. It's a great number three. Um, moving on to Salt and Light Ministries. This is another example of a cause box donation form. So right off the bat, um, we have the organization explaining um, what the gift helps. Um, so they're helping neighbors physically and spiritually. Um, and then a little bit more of a breakdown about what the gift supports. Uh, and so, you know, you could, include this type of impact on the side like this, if it's an embedded form or even right on the tier description. Um, I think that's something that they could also switch or add um, or just remove this donation. If there's no content of value here, they can just remove that description and use a value tier, um, you know, just the numeric part. Um, but yeah, love the, love the communication about what the gift supports. Um, the, the fact that they have different types of donation options. Um, and then again, it's just a very easy transaction here on the second page. Um, they are also collecting postal and then they do have a mobile wallet, which again helps with the donor transaction speed um, and just their ability to get in and out of the form um, simply and easily. Uh, so, I like this donation page. I like the like the design of their um, you know the graphic here at the header, um, their colors. I think it's just quick and easy. Um, and yeah, I think this is another great example of the donation form. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think one of the things I really like uh, about this one is that they embedded this on their uh, donate page, and then there's the what your gift supports area here. So it provides uh, some compelling narrative. Um, about uh, what the, the donation is going towards. So generally this is a pretty good best practice. So I really love that. Um, I think another aspect that I would improve on um, on their donation pages, they can actually customize some of the colors and the branding of it. Like they can have a title and subtitle. Uh, they can have like a different color aspect about it too, because I, do, I did notice that they're using the default blue uh, that's through a Cosbox platform, which uh, it's fine, <laughs> but it, it may have been better if they used like the darker blue that's in their in their logo or maybe even the orange, um, so they can do a little bit more branding around that. Mm -hmm. Great point. Yeah, it's it would be great to just customize it a little bit more. Sometimes I forget all the ways that Cosbox forms can be customized to just meet your brand. Um, but that being said, we're moving on to our uh, our next donation form. Um, so. Really clear, vibrant red um, for you know their color, 
color there, hex color here, their brand. Um, donate today. So I think if I click this, this brings me to this landing page. Right. So we're at the landing page. Um, I scroll down. We have a little bit about their mission statement, um, compelling vision here. Uh, and then the embedded donation form, it tells me how many steps I have to complete it. Uh, some donation tiers here, uh, and then some different frequencies here. Um, yeah, I think right off the bat, like visible, right? It checks off the visibility box. Um, it checks off the branded box because, or at least part of it, because it's embedded directly on the page. There's no navigation away from the page. Um, I think they could add descriptive tiers here to maybe break down into detail um, the donation and how it's impacting the lives of people they're, um, they're helping in their community. Um, and then secondly, let's go on to the next section here. Uh, we have a way to give in honor and memory of someone. And then we have the donor information. Uh, okay, it looks like billing addresses is required because um, the only option here is to give by debit or credit card, which um, that's great, um, but it's always nice to give the donor a few more options for payments um, in case, you know, they're on their phone, they're on the go, um, they don't want to have to pull out their credit card, um, and it's, you know, they don't memorize it maybe, uh, so like I do, but um, that's <laughs> neither here nor there, um, but, you know, they can use their safe payment method, whether it's Apple, Google Pay, or even PayPal, um, the cost box form does include both button options for a really fast transaction. Um, yeah, but all in all, I think this is a really great, um, a great page. I think I love the photos of these like personal testimonies, it looks like. Um, and so I do like this donation form. Um, I think, you know, it could be cleaned up just a little bit by um, just the, the, the style in which the embed is here. Um, you know, maybe change the field look and feel. Um, maybe make it a two-step form instead of a three-step form um, and then add those descriptive tiers uh, to maybe hopefully double um, or even triple the impact that, that a donor can make. Um, yeah, I think the other thing here, uh, you know, they're considering a recurring donation. Um, I think Rob mentioned the idea of pledge, uh, including a, a pledge now pay later option. Um, and, because they are looking for recurring gifts, I think it is nice to to incorporate this trending giving option, which is pledge, um, instead of just giving a recurring gift without end, uh, without you know a specific uh, goal in mind. Um, the pledge now pay later allows the donor to make a conscious decision on um, a, a specific commitment value. Um, so they're going to keep giving every month or every year uh, up until that is fulfilled, and so. Um, with that kind of intentionality in mind uh, and that kind of automatic fulfillment, you can automatically increase um, and, and just optimize for larger gifts year round um, with a pledge option if you want to incorporate that. Um, Rob, I don't know if you wanted to add anything else about. Yeah, um, I really love this one because of how they tell the story. When I was going through this page, it really jumped out um, where they have um, their intended kind of transactional area, the, the form area up top. And then they have kind of this really compelling story on the bottom about like the organization, the strategy, like things like that. And I think their sponsors, which is really great. Um, I think that, to me, I think what's interesting about this is that in a lot of times we see donation pages being very utilitarian. There's like, okay, here's a form like donors put in your info and go through it so you can make a donation. I think what's interesting here is that there's that but then there's this whole other part um, below that, which is more about the story. So I find it really compelling where if someone lands on this page, um, if they want to get more info, uh, they can by scrolling, but obviously the primary call to action for them is to make a donation up top. So that's something really interesting to think about. And also provides, um, you know, typically speaking, uh, the two pages on a nonprofit's website that gets the most amount of traffic are one, the homepage, and secondly, their donate page. So if you're trying to get exposure to your sponsors, supporters, kind of your corporate folks, then um, if you have your logos on the bottom of your donation page, uh, you can count those numbers as exposure uh, for your corporate sponsors. So it's kind of interesting um, the way to think about it. 
Uh, so those are some great uh, things to really like. Um, I think you mentioned a lot of great things that they can improve on already. So um, I don't have anything to add to that. Right. Uh, moving right along, we have Operation Hope Foundation. Uh, donate to make real hope to make hope real. Um, I think that's just a great first first statement, right? Like, who doesn't need hope in their life? Um, but so I. I just like that slogan um, or that little catchphrase. Um, as we scroll down, uh, we have a compelling image that is the background of their site here. Um, and then and then general donation form right embedded here. So it, it really just, I feel like this one draws the donor into the, the nitty gritty of this organization's um, action, what they're doing, where, where they are on the ground, um, the kind of impact they're making in people's lives. I think that that usually, that, that can happen from a very compelling graphic. And I like that the donation form is literally right attached to it. Um, and so, yeah, I just have always loved the way that this kind of like pulls at heartstrings a little bit um, and, you know, really shows the impact as you scroll down further um, that, that a gift is, is actually creating a legacy and giving hope to so many people. Um, so I think in combination with, you know, their language, their graphic, um, learning how to donate, um, I think that it's all kind of uh, culminates to, you know, a good impact and a good way to process more and more donations. Um, and then, you know, again, this is this is the same form um, for, you know, Causevox. Um, so we have, as always, a really quick and easy payment method with Google and Apple Pay. Uh, I do think that they could add descriptions, maybe one line here, um, maybe a few descriptive tiers, uh, just to say specifically how, how the donation is being used. Um, and yeah, again, like I haven't, okay, so I guess I see that they also have additional cause box forms um, being linked to their, um, to the bottom of their site. So they have more of like a campaign-esque uh, feel for their linked donation forms at the bottom. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't see anything wrong with that. Uh, I think that that's also a great, a great, great way to use the donation form. You can use it as a standalone page, but um, I always prefer the direct embed um, to leave people right here on the page. Um, yeah, and so as you scroll through, like you see more sponsorship opportunities. Um, and so I guess, yeah, they have just a lot, a lot of different ways to get involved and to help uh, these children that they are sponsoring uh, abroad. Um, so yeah, I think that this is great. Um, I think if they wanted to, they could maybe put some of those, um, put some of these different initiatives or different programs on the form on the second page as a drop down. We do offer customizable questions. So it could say, oh, you know, what, what initiative do you want your donation to go to? You could drop it down and say, oh, I, I want to sponsor a child. I want to, I want it to go towards the, the water relief, um, you know, whatever mission driven um, donation you want. Um, in the form of a checkbox, a drop down, or a short answer, you can gain that information. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I, uh, just to echo kind of what you just mentioned, just really briefly, I, I really like how um, they've embedded this and then it has the imagery in the background. So I think that goes a long way of telling the story, uh, as well as telling the brand as one of our best practices. Um, and then the other one would be. Um, uh, just that there's multiple ways. You have this embedded form as well as you have this ability just to have a hosted donation page. So I think that's really great. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Jenna, just one of the feedbacks that someone's giving is that um, if they can just slow down on your scrolling, uh, then that would help them. So let's go to the next one. Sure. Let's see. Um, we have Christian County Library. Um, and your gift matters. Our library is about more than books. Um, so a little bit of a description here. Uh, and then we have a few donation values. If I select the donate option, let's see what happens. Okay, so it goes into a, a cart, sort of like I'm shopping. Uh, let's see. So yeah, I mean, this is this is an, another example. I guess it's you know a non-traditional donation form because this is more of an order 
an order form uh, sort of transitioned into a donation option. Um, so this could be a little like confusing for a donor if they're not sure, you know, does this make it a 501c3? Is this um, going to a nonprofit? Um, I guess, yeah, as a donor, I'm, I don't really know what to make of it since it's an order form and a cart. Um, but I guess my recommendation would be to switch it over to um, a traditional embedded donation form. Um, yeah, any, I, I don't know how, Rob, I don't, maybe you have. No, no, uh, if, if you go back to the previous page, um, I, I like how they have this page is very clean and then they have already a thank you on the bottom just to thank donors. So I think a lot of times uh, I, I go in and I make donations to our customers just randomly. Uh, I go down a list and I just make donations down the line. And uh, what's surprising to me is that uh, almost, almost all, well, the majority of them don't even thank me, which is kind of weird. They just keep kind of, they give like an automated email that Coswalk sends as a thank you. And I'm like, that's great. Uh, but then there's no, nothing additional to that. So I think the more you're able to thank your donor even before they do, then I think that's really helpful. So I love kind of like this aspect of it. Uh, but yes, I agree with you, Jenna. They're using uh, a shopping cart feature that's built into their um, Square uh, point of sale system as their donation form. Now, uh, if you don't get a lot of donations, it might be a chicken egg where like, you don't get a lot of donations because uh, you have a, a kind of shopping cart way of, make, of getting donations or you may not get a lot of donations because you get your revenue in some other mechanism. But if there is bandwidth um, that the team has uh, over here at, at the library, then I think it's worthwhile to have your shopping cart for your sales aspect of what you're trying to do. And then you have your donation form and donation page aspect of when you're soliciting for donations. So having two separate flows would be more helpful um, and less confusing for donors. I think someone from the audience even said that, um, that when uh, they were asking, hey, like, how did that value jump from 50 to 100? And it's because like, it's been quote unquote, uh, hacked over here, where uh, if someone selects 100 on a previous page, and the, the, the quantity increases to match the number, because this organization is trying to make things work over here. So um, I don't, I think functionally speaking, this works, but then it, it as an optimization, uh, if the organization does have bandwidth and if this is a focus, then uh, rethinking this flow where it follows more of a two, one step, two step donation process uh, would be uh, more helpful for a lot of donors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks for the clarity around, um, around that. Mm -hmm. I think maybe we only have time for one more then we have uh, a billion questions that people have asked. So we'll love to, to kind of jump into those questions. Great, awesome. So we'll look at one more. Uh, this donate option here, very visible and brings us off the page, however, to Give Lively. Um, this one again is thanking, thanking donors already and gives their mission and vision, um, which is always very important. Uh, but I think as we've mentioned many times, um, it would always be a little bit more beneficial to keep it on the page and not direct to a third party site. Um, the rest of their donation page landing page, or I believe this is the home page actually. This is the home page. Um, so they have the call to action donate button right here, and then it brings them to their donation form. Um, yeah, I guess I would say um, what we've been saying, um, like I said, uh, to just keep it on the page. Uh, as an embedded form, and then you know maybe um, add some add some descriptive tiers to tie the donation to impact. I do like how there's a quick share. Um, they do have a mobile wallet with Google Pay, um, so it seems like this is a pretty fast transaction. I would just say to um, make sure it's embedded, um, and so the donor is not redirected. They can stay on and continue learning more about the church. Um, Yep, uh, I, I love how they have um, this ability to make mobile payments to make it easy for the flow of it. Um, the only thing that I, I could see um, as a potential improvement off the bat is, uh, well, I really love kind of the left area here where they have information about the organization. 
but I think the presentation of it can be improved where it's less about, hey, here's something I copy and pasted from <laughs> my board resource document about vision and, and uh, purpose and all that stuff. And something a little more compelling geared towards what donors um, or their audience, their congregants want to hear about. So telling them about the impact. So I think that would be a more compelling way to, to, to tie the narrative and the story together. So that's the only thing I would do. Um, awesome. Well, I think we blew through, I don't know how many different critiques really quickly. I hope that was helpful for a lot of folks. I think as I, we were going through this, we have a ton of questions. And originally I did say we have 15 minutes and uh, we will honor that. So um, should we jump into some of these questions? Awesome. Yeah, let's, let's do it. Okay. okay, so we'll start from the top. Um, so Amy from Wildlife Conservation Network, we have limited choices for online donation forms because we need a shopping cart feature that allows donors to give to any number of programs in one donation. Uh, the receipts are tailored to which programs they choose. Also, our events are complicated to multi-day with high segmentation with both free and paid options. I think we really need a little more info uh, from Amy in terms of um, the specific question, but we'd be happy to answer that one. Um, we have a bunch of other questions too that I answered real quickly. Someone asked if we have a Salesforce connection between Cosbox and Salesforce. Yes, we do. Um, we can talk to you more about that or you can find some resources on our website. Uh, you will receive a copy of the slides as well. Um, we have some questions related to how important is it to have visuals on a donation page, visuals, photos, is more content good or not? So I think it depends on your page. Uh, if you have something that's more generic, like a page on your website, uh, that's just more for general donations, have something uh, that has the, the visuals or a compelling story like bullet points, or just kind of whatever you want to do in order to compel somebody, then I think that is more useful, like some of the examples we went through. Um, if you're having something that's more transactional, let's say you're doing an e-blast, or you just have a standalone donation page because you're fundraising for a specific campaign or a specific program, then you may not need to reiterate some of those points and have some of those visuals. You may just need to have a form because you're doing all your compelling storytelling somewhere else and you're just directing people to make a donation. Um, oh, we have a billion questions. So uh, let's just go down the list real fast. So Janine, uh, asks, uh, should a donate button be red in harmony with the site? Is it currently in yellow? I think this is relating to one of the examples that we shared. Um, so uh, typically speaking, when you design a website or uh, when you talk to your marketing person, if you have one, uh, you typically have a color palette that you're working with. So basically this is a series of two to five different colors um, that your uh, visuals should be designed around. Uh, typically speaking, your call to action, like your buttons, would be either the primary or secondary color. So what you want to do is uh, you may not necessarily want to use red as your donate button, but if it's within your color palette for your branding, then yes, you should be using red or the secondary color, which may be a yellow or which may be a blue. Um, Stephanie Moore asks, do the mobile wallets have to be good? an option through the donor platform we use. So as a best practice, since mobile wallets are growing, uh, there's, you'll see a 50% growth between 2020 and 2025, and we're in the middle of that, uh, offering an option that your donors can take advantage of if they're using it for uh, kind of more of their retail purchases is always a good idea because typically uh, donors make more retail purchases than donations. So the more you're able to mirror e-commerce, for example, or how they pay at a restaurant, for example, with your donation process, then the better. So typically I would recommend offering a mobile wallet just because there's a huge growth in this. And then as there's a huge growth, then donors would expect your nonprofit to offer a similar approach. Uh, for us, let's see. What's the next question, Jenna? Well, uh, let's see. Um, is using a pop-up form risk running into pop-up blockers? Um, I think that's referring to, I'm not sure exactly to which one that's referring to, but if it's to some of the uh, Cosbox examples that were submitted, um, then how we do um, our pop-ups, they're, they're um, 
they're essentially iframe modals. So uh, they're not affected by pop-up blockers. You're not actually popping up like a new browser window. Uh, so because of that, it's not affected by any type of ad blockers or pop-up blockers. We see uh, close to 100% uh, visibility on our embedded donation forms that pop up. Hmm. What is the best way of giving the donor an option to mail a check or recommend a donation form, uh, recommend a donation from an, an advised fund? It's from Bruce. Oh yeah, typically how we see it on our platform um, or our customers at least, I can only answer to that, is on your donation page, you have a section where you, you say, hey, you wanna give um, offline, then feel free to um, share us uh, or feel free to contact us or mail your checks to this address. Uh, when people use this for campaign sites at least, we see it on a side uh, where they have a section with a little bit more info in terms of how someone can complete an offline donation. Great. Let's see, Ash, we have, do have a lot of questions. Um, can you explain a little more about the features of a mobile wallet? Does it repopulate donor info each time the person returns? Does it provide text reminders to donors? Mm. Yeah, that's a great question. So mobile wallets are something like Apple Pay, that's through your iPhone, or Google Pay, that's through your Android phone, where uh, donors uh, can add their credit card, debit card, or just kind of whatever they want, um, so that when they go in and make a transaction, uh, whether it's on your donation form or whether it's on uh, any other website that they can use uh, that stored payment method. Uh, this way, uh, they can basically just pay without having to pull out their credit card and enter in that credit card number. So it saves about one to two minutes, maybe more, depending on the flow. Uh, so that's something that automatically saves your donor's uh, payment methods automatically. Awesome. Uh, let's see. Oh, this, I think this one's a good one. Bruce also says, we appear to have two, two very different types of donors, many $10 to $50 donors, but a few $1,000 to $5,000 donors. What's a good way of handling the difference? Mm, sorry, what was the question again? So how do you how do you handle different um, different level giving donors? Would you put it all on one donation form? Have range from ten to five thousand, or would uh, you? Yes, yeah, that's a that's a great uh, question. Um, so typically speaking, uh, on, on your website donation form, yeah, something more general and broad based on uh, your average donation values, and then typically. Uh, what we recommend and see is that organizations that are targeting like major gift donors or just higher dollar value donors, they have a different specific form. Because for those donors, you're doing a lot of one-to-one -one, um, type of fundraising where you might be calling somebody or emailing someone directly, and you can actually spin up a, a separate donation form uh, for that audience. Or if you're doing an e-blast, then if you segment out, okay, these are my my hundred like large dollar value donors, then you can send them a special donation form with special donation tiers. So uh, spinning up uh, fundraising specific donation pages uh, is, is pretty helpful than just sending everybody to the same page. Yeah, and do we have time for one more question? Two more questions? Yeah, let's do it. Um, so how do you get people to a nonprofit's donation page? How do you get people with a nonprofit? <laughs> Rob, this is testing you. <laughs> you want me to answer this in two minutes? No, I don't know. <laughs> right. So, uh, you, know, you have to do marketing. I mean, that's that's basically what marketing is, right? Marcom and fundraising. So, you can either get people to your website donation page by uh, telling one on one people to do it, or you can do a marketing based. So that's sales based. If you want to do a marketing based, then you you'll want to use different marketing channels, right? social media, email, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, organic search as well. So I can't answer this question <laughs> within the requisite amount of time, but my short answer is that uh, you need to tell a great story, use different marketing methods, pick one or two channels to use and just focus your time on one or two channels. Don't try to boil the ocean here. Hmm. I will just say there are a bunch of people asking questions about integrations with other platforms like Salesforce, Microsoft, um, Bloomerang, uh, E-Tapestry, yes, we integrate with all these major players, um, all the major apps you could think of, um, we integrate with them very easily and uh, we can definitely show you around how that works. Um, if you have more questions, you can always email us at support at for that too. Um, I don't know, do you, 
Let's see, how many more do we have? Do you want to launch the poll? Oh yes, we need you to win her. All oh, right, geez. we have to That's, do the winner. This is the most important piece of why people are still here. So <laughs> <laughs> we need to make a donation here. So uh, let's vote for your favorite donation um, page here. Uh, there's a collection of ones that we went over. Uh, feel free to answer this. And this would be the audience choice over here where you will, uh, sorry, uh, I, I will make a donation to whoever wins over here. So uh, Arisa, you can keep this open for as long as you want, uh, but hopefully for another minute or two, people can complete their favorite uh, selection here and then we'll see who is the winner. Yeah, we're at 50%. Let me just keep going until most people have done it. And in the meantime, uh, Jenna, you also get to do a speaker's choice. And um, I know the pressure. The pressure is real here. Let's see what our audience has to say. Wonder if it's the same one I'm thinking. But okay, I I'm going to close the survey in one minute, or the poll in one minute. Also, I would like to um, ask you to please fill out the survey. This was an excellent presentation. So we want to know what more you would like to see from Causebox. I saw a suggestion in the comment section from Judy about how to better get people to find your homepage. I think maybe Rob may have answered that, but um, I think you know they could give some good questions. Marketing, marketing, that's, that was the answer. <laughs> okay, here's the poll ended, sharing results. And it looks like, can you see it? We can see it. So with 31%, Res Refuge is the winner by, by audience choice, looks like. Nice. I think I really also loved um, Fun for the Disabled. So that's going to be my speaker's choice. OK, we have our winners. So after this session, um, I'm going to go in and make a make a donation to Res Refuge as well as Fun for Disabled. Congratulations yes. uh, for on this call. Um, you just won this webinar. So <laughs> not only do you get pride as a nonprofit, but also uh, you get a, a small donation from the folks here at Coswax. So thank you so much for that. All right. Um, where are we here? So just to wrap things up over here, I know I'm a little bit over time. Uh, we talked about the winner. We do have some additional resources too. Um, I know we didn't get to all the questions and I do apologize. Uh, we could probably do another hour just going over some of these questions with some deep dives. And maybe Aretha, if you'd love to have Jenna and I come back, uh, then we can deep dive into some of these areas as well. Um, but in the meantime, we do have some additional resources. We did talk about our Cosvox blog, cosvox.com slash blog. Uh, we have a ton of resources there. So feel free to, to subscribe to our blog. You get a weekly email with some nice resources. Um, all of them are free uh, where you can take advantage of, whether they be webinars or blog posts or online guides and PDFs, templates, worksheets. Um, you know, I started this company because I wanted to help nonprofits. So as part of that, our social mission is to educate even if we don't have the opportunity to serve you with our fundraising tools. So feel free to subscribe. You've got a lot of resources there. But in the meantime, we do have a bunch of links over here on donation forms, best practices, donation page practices. Um, so all that good stuff. So feel free to check that out. Um, and again, we have an attendee only special offer. So uh, with our new partnership with TechSoup, um, we love to serve eligible organizations or those with under 500,000 annual budgets. Uh, feel free to go to techsoup.org slash Cosvox, and then you can take advantage of the offer by sitting in your validation, and then we'll reach out to you on some next steps. And for the organizations that have over $500,000 in budget, we don't want to exclude you. Um, you can contact support at Cosvox.com and mention special offer Jenna 500, uh, which is Jenna's name with 500. Um, then we love to be able to provide you with a similar offer as well. So um, don't want to exclude you all. Very lastly, um, you can learn more about Cosvox through an on-demand demo, cosvox.com slash schedule dash a dash demo. If you want to learn more about our product, um, it's about 
I don't know what, 10, 12 minute video recording, 14 minutes, I actually forget. But uh, Jenna actually will take you through through a recording on the Cosbox platform. I can use this for donation pages, donation forms, as well as how you can use this for peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, crowdfunding, capital campaigns, all that good stuff. So feel free to check that out um, when you do have a chance. And we actually went over questions already. So I think we're all set. Well, thanks so much for your time today, everybody. I really had a lot of fun through this live critique of how to turbocharge your donation page. And we will be sending out the slides very shortly, as well as for the folks who won people's choice as well as speaker's choice. I look forward to your $100 donation uh, in your inbox very soon. So thanks so much today. And you all have a great rest of your week. <laughs>